Welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. Glad you could join me. As always, smash that like button before we get started and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Okay, that's all you got to do. Simple. Thank you. I forget to do that to videos I really like too, unless somebody tells me. So that's why I tell you. Because they told me if I don't, you won't do it. So anyway, we'll get past that. Okay, today's topic is wealth. Wealth. What does the word wealth mean? I have spoken about this before. Here in the U.S. or in most first world countries, when we think of the word wealth, we think of money. And yes, wealth does have something to do with money. But the true meaning of the word wealth it comes from an Anglo-Saxon word, wheel, which means well-being. Of course, it seems logical that to have well-being, you have to have money. But that's not necessarily so. Having money is a part of having wealth. Of course, you want to have a house and food and clothes for yourself, your family. That is definitely a part of wealth. It would be hard to feel wealthy or to be happy or to be comfortable, although comfortable doesn't always mean happy. A lot of times, if you get yourself out of the comfort zone, you're actually much more happy and fulfilled than you would be if you stay comfortable. So sometimes discomfort is a positive thing, or it can be depending on your perception of it. If it motivates you to be more, to do more, to, to move your butt off the chair or off the couch, then discomfort can be good. But if you run away from it by drinking or taking out uh, drugs or, or getting drunk every day, nothing wrong with having to drink once in a while, nothing wrong with recreational drug use if you uh, use it wisely. But if you're hammering that stuff down every day or you're getting high all day every day, or every day you gotta come home and have a few beers or a couple hits off of a joint or whatever to, to, to relax, to take the edge off, then you're running away from your responsibility as a human being to learn how to deal with that discomfort and, and ask yourself what that discomfort is telling you that you need to do, which is to move towards wealth, to move towards well-being. Because these crutches, alcohol or drugs, just mask the emotion and mask the uh, the the problem it, it deals with the symptom of the problem and the symptom is discomfort which is motivating you away from the problem to get you to do something about it and when you just mask it or cover it up you will never deal with the problem it will always be there you won't rise in consciousness you will stay where you are now to become wealthy you have to rise in consciousness and one of the things you have to rise to is the realization that wealth is not just money. There are people that have plenty of money that are miserable. And there are people who are poor that are miserable. And there are people who are poor that are happy and feel, feel fulfilled. And they trust in God or a higher power or universe or whatever their uh, beliefs are that they will be taken care of. That if they have everything they need for today... Because really, this is all you have is today. All fear is from the future. Or we have fear from the past, that we made a mistake and it's going to come back on us, or that we didn't do something right. Very rarely do we have fear in the present moment. Now, for example, if you're driving down the road and someone pulls out in front of you and you slam on the brakes and you almost hit them, in that moment, you're, you're afraid. And it's, it's fear in the moment. But most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, the fear is about something you, you think is gonna happen or might happen. I could use the election for an example. I seen a post yesterday and this guy posted, oh, here's what so-and-so is already doing and, uh, and I'm not advocating either of the candidates. Well, we don't have candidates now, but um, I'm just saying that the man is projecting fear of something in the future. Now he's talking about what the guy is doing now, the actions the new president is taking now, and he's talking about it in a negative way. And whether it's negative or positive, I'm not, I'm not voicing my opinion on that. The point is, the actions he took yesterday, nothing is happening yet. 
okay, he took the actions, but whether it happens in the future, who knows? I mean, the, the president could change his mind tomorrow. Probably not, but you, you understand the point I'm making? The fear that this man is having and projecting on other people is the fear of what is going to happen, not actually what happened right now. And that's the way all of us are, myself included. I've been afraid, and mostly it's about something I'm afraid I think it's going to happen in the future or a mistake I made in the past when in reality I don't even know if it was a mistake sometimes it's hard for us to judge whether something is a mistake or not because we we can't see the big picture we judge with our limited conception and it is so limited you have no idea how limited your conception is you cannot see the big picture Yes, we figure out and we think and we logically analyze everything and we think we know all the ins and outs, but there's so many things that can happen. You plan your day. Here's a good one for you. Plan your day today. Okay, and at the end of the day, look at your plan. Now you tell me who's in charge. Did everything go as planned? Very rarely does that ever happen. And even if it does, you can't foresee how your plan is going to come to fruition. It may come about as you plan, but the ways that it comes about is beyond you. You cannot foresee that. It's good to make a plan. It helps you have a direction to step out into. And as Martin Luther King said, I always quote him, you don't have to see the whole staircase, staircase to take the first step. Many people never do anything. They never move toward wealth because they don't know the whole road. They can't see the whole road. They don't have a map in front of them. They can't see, oh, if I go this way and go that way, and if this happens, okay. But even with a map, you don't know if there's going to be a rainstorm and the, the road's going to be washed out or, or whether there's going to be construction. Or for example, one time I went to Iowa. I hadn't been up there for years and I always went up Highway 61. Well, I had the GPS but I didn't listen to the GPS because I knew 61 was a straight shot. Well, long story short, it ended up taking me an hour and a half longer to get there because I didn't follow the GPS. I didn't trust its guidance. I remembered from the past what the quickest way to go was. Well, the past does not equal the present or the future, but there's a good example. I use the past to judge today, to guide me through today. Guess what? It didn't work because things are constantly changing. In life, things constantly change. If you wanna get used to something, get used to change because everything is always changing. And that is what causes people the most problems and resist their, their uh, ability to accept wealth because they fight change. They judge and they make decisions based on yesterday. I've done it too, I'm telling you. But true wealth is a feeling of contentment with whatever you have. Now that's a contentment that you're, you're really just grateful and have appreciation and you just feel a, a certain sense of satisfaction with everything the way it is in this day, in this moment. Okay, you're not afraid of the future, you don't regret the past, and then whatever you have besides that is a plus. Okay, if you have a lot of money, that's great. If you don't, you trust that you're going to be taken care of. And you trust because you know that you're going to follow your intuitive uh, guidance whenever the, uh, the uh, guidance arises within you. You're not going to logicalize it. I'm not sure if that's a word. <laughs> you're not going to rationalize it and use logic to think, well, I don't know if that'll work. I'm not sure. Most of the problems you have will never happen. There's a quote, uh, I can't remember who did the same, but he said, I've had many problems in my life, much of most of which never come to realization. And that's true for most of us. Think about all the things you worried about. Worry, which is faith in reverse, or belief in reverse, which works just as well, especially when it's tied up with a lot of emotion, will bring to you what you fear. So wealth is not just money. I mean, I, you can have money and be happy. You can have money and be miserable. I've had a lot of money at one time and been miserable as hell. I've lived poor as hell in Guatemala and I was happy. I had to walk 12 miles a day to teach English for $1 an hour. And that was one of the happiest times in my life. I owned nothing. I slept on the floor. 
on foam mattresses. I cooked on a hot plate. And we lived in a place with two concrete rooms and uh, a big yard, which was dirt, with a lemon tree out there, which would make kids play underneath. My wife at the time, when I was married, uh, was did very well in uh, spending the money and buying food at the market. And one of, that was one of the most fulfilling times of my life, and I had nothing. Nothing. I owned nothing, except my mattresses and my hot plate, okay, and a couple of books to teach English for a dollar an hour. <laughs> Uh, I didn't take the bus because I wanted to save the quarter because I needed that. And eventually I got a school and I started acquiring things. And you can be happy with things too. You can be wealthy with things as well as without. As long as those things don't own you. You have to be free from the things. You have to be in a position where if you come home and your house burned down, of course you're going to feel sadness, but you're okay with that. It doesn't destroy you. You're not so attached to it that it just wrecks your whole life and you can't get past it. True wealth is an inside job, regardless of what you have on the outside. But what I'll tell you about true wealth is when you have that true wealth on the inside, then everything you need and more in an abundance will come to you in your life. Because is a person wealthy because he has money or does he have money because he's wealthy? That's something you need to think about. I'll tell you what it is, he has money because he's wealthy. You could take all his money away and it would all come back to him very soon because he has the consciousness of a wealthy person. He's wealthy with the money or without the money. His wealth is inherent within himself. Okay, thanks for joining me and hope this has been of help to you. I'm sure it has. Hit the like and subscribe button and if you'd like to get my help personally, you can contact me at marksinspirationalguidance at gmail.com. That's in the bio. Have a great day.